We're starting to get away from the two-party system. I can feel it coming. I'm very excited about that because I'm sick of it. It sucks. It doesn't work. And also, the jokes are lame. They just go two ways. Like, we need more directions. Like, I like insults. I like, you know, because before it was like the insults, it was just like the left would insult the right. You're not a bunch of racist rednecks. The uh, right would insult, but I would love it when it go that way, when conservatives would insult liberals, because they always insult them for liking good things. That's always like the basis of what they're saying. You liberals, you're nothing but a bunch of latte sipping, eggs benedict eating, pot smoking assholes. <laughs> well, I don't care for your tone, sir, but thanks for implying that I had a great morning because that's what you just very sumptuously described in your burn. Oh, you like Bernie Sanders, huh? Why don't you go eat a salad, a fruit salad, and listen to an opera? That's exactly what I was gonna do today. This is weird, why are you? But yeah, I, um, but it's weird. They're gonna, you know, we're gonna, you know, like, you're gonna, people are gonna hate whoever is president. I remember when Obama was president, people hated that guy, they hated him. And even when he started the campaign, I mean, like, you may not agree with his policies or whatever, but like, you gotta, I mean, I admired his 2008 campaign. He was trying to unite groups of people, bring them together. It was inspiring. I was saying that we're going to get my campaign. I will not be divisive. There's too much division in this country. I will bring folks together, black and white, rich and poor, Latino and Asian, Jews and Muslims. Like, mm, careful that one. I don't know. <laughs> Bloods and Crips. The gatekeeper and the key master. All right, now that's a very bad idea. If I understand Ghostbusters correctly. But man, they would go after him. Mm. And like they would find every, they, would, they were so good at taking everything he said and trying to like twist it in some way so it was like sinister. Like Fox did that all, Fox News did that all the time. Like he could see the most innocuous shit. He'd be like, uh, I like dogs. Uh, I've always liked dogs. I like petting them. You know, uh, playing fetch with dogs. Dogs are good. Like, like the ad for Fox, President Obama says he likes dogs. <laughs> Then they show that, they'd be like, sound familiar? They show that grainy footage of Hitler petting his German shepherd or whatever, like, all right, come on. We got to, they whittled down the Democratic field. There was like 184 people running, and now it's like 28. That's good. We're making progress. So far, it's just like, uh, you know, businessmen and politicians or whatever. That's fine. I'm just glad, I was really worried that the Democratic Party would try to, like, do this counter, so like, Donald Trump won because he's famous. Like, I was worried they're gonna do this, like, counter celebrity thing. Because when Trump won, people were like, well, Oprah should be president next. I'm like, no. But like, they could, dude, because like, all the celebrities are on that side. They get around like George Clooney that everyone likes. But, I, but George Clooney wouldn't win. Like, I don't know if you know this about George Clooney. George Clooney, a few years ago, invested in a tequila company that he didn't do anything for, he just invested in it. That tequila company on its own became extremely successful. They uh, sold the company. Off that sale, George Clooney made a billion dollars. A billion. So he's George Clooney and also has a billion dollars. There's a limit to what people are gonna connect with in their presidential candidate. Like I know Trump is, he won, but he, he's rich, but people are like, but he's also dumb and ugly, so people are like, yeah, that's my fucking dude, man. <laughs> Like George Clooney, he'd get knocked out in the primary debates immediately based on that. Mr. Clooney, here's my question for you. Uh, you're George Clooney. Why do you also want to be president of the United States? Well, that's a very good question. I appreciate you asking that. And I guess the answer to that question would be, I, care, I love America. And I care about America. I care about Americans. And I know it's hard out there for people. It's really hard out there, right, guys? I mean, it's hard uh, for me, too. I'll give you an example. A couple years ago, I accidentally made a billion dollars. <laughs> At first, I thought it was a prank, you know, like Brad Pitt, Matt Damon. We're always doing that, playing gags and boners on each other. <laughs> uh, but no, it turns out it was true. And you guys, you know, the, the financial ramifications of that amount of windfall in one fiscal year, I mean, the, the, the accountant fees alone would pay for this shitty farm I'm standing in front of right now. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> Senator Sanders, a response? 
All right, all right. Uh, let me be. I, I want to be absolutely clear here to everybody listening. I have been a fan of George Clooney since Facts of Life. Okay. <laughs> Although I didn't completely fall in love with him until ER. I think. I think. The Ocean's Eleven series is so much fun it should be heavily regulated by the federal government, in my opinion. <laughs> I even enjoy Monuments Men. However, fanboy aside, the top 1% of uh, the, you know, the American people uh, don't deserve to be represented by the top 1% of top 1% of extremely good-looking accidental billionaires, and that's simply the truth. He wouldn't win. I, uh, I enjoy watching Movies? No, too late. I, uh, <laughs> I enjoy watching uh, movies with my kid now that he's a little older. Like, I get to show him all the ones that I enjoyed growing up. And, uh, I, I, like, especially when he was a little younger, I was chomping at the bit a little bit. I'm like, ah, he's old enough to see this. He's, that's, that. I was wrong. I, uh, like, my favorite movies were the Indiana Jones movies, right? And, uh, they, uh, like, I was like, mm, like, the first two were super violent. I think the third one's fine. So I showed him the third one, and I totally forgot there was a scene where they cut some dude's head off at the end, and the severed head just, like, rolls downstairs <laughs> and, like, hits a guy's leg, and everyone's like, ugh. And it happened, like, too fast for me to, like, pa get the thing and pause it or whatever, so he just saw that shit, like, at five. <laughs> and then he turned around to me, he was like, these are not like the booby traps in Home Alone. I was like, all right, okay. You said something funny, so this makes it worthwhile. I can tell that on stage. But those movies always crack me up, man. The, the plot is Indiana Jones, he's a college professor somewhere in the 1930s. Every movie's got that scene in the beginning where he's like teaching class and then something comes up and he has to go save the world. And I guess he just cancels class for the next six weeks. <laughs> Shit, yeah. I don't know what school this is, but that is a class to take, man. I don't know, they, they, the kids know it, too. They, they're all into it. They're like, hey, man, you want to blow off class this semester? Archaeology with Jones, man. <laughs> Every semester, you got to find some holy sh stick or some shit. He takes off. The class goes, you know, it's like Harrison Ford walks in there the first day. All right, class, my name's Dr. Indiana Jones. I'll be your professor for Archaeology 101. I'm handing out a syllabus for the required reading or whatever college thing. It's been a while. <laughs> His dad busts in the door. Junior. Dad, I'm trying to teach class here, all right? Junior, there's no time. Rommel Zombie's about to uncover the sword of destiny in a Vandalic horde in Tunisia. Dad, I can't just go chasing after some sword all the time. It's not just any sword, Junior. It's Notum. Notum, the legendary sword of Sigmund the Volsung, bestowed by his widow upon Theodoric the Ostrogoth before the slaughter of the Burgundians in 454 AD, and then lost for a thousand years. That sword belongs in a museum, Dad. <laughs> Meanwhile, that class is sitting there going, yeah, you, oh, you better get that shit, dude. That sounds very important. Don't worry about us. We'll do a self-study or whatever. He takes off, the class goes to some bar to party afterwards. What I tell you, dude, every semester. Bob Sword. But then they made that fourth one. Mm. That doesn't exist in my house. We pretend it didn't happen. It was bad. He had a son in that one, like Illinois Jones or whatever. I don't care. Cast, they, they cast like what is Shia LaBeouf or whatever as his son. Like, come on, man, this is not. It was stupid. And it was such a cynical money grab for them to even make that movie in the first place. It's like they should, like, just put Vince Vaughn as his son. Who cares? It's like a buddy comedy for the summer or whatever. Who cares? Listen to me, son. We need to find the stone of the Dal Riata before the Soviet army gets to it. Okay, Dad, you know what? I like where your head's at right now. You're very focused on finding the stone of whatever that was that you were just talking about right there. But I don't really know if I'm qualified to go along on this little adventure. I'm not an archaeologist. I run a strip club in Denver. It's actually what I do for a living. But you know what? You and Grandpa, you guys go have fun in your little adventure together. It's going to be very exciting, very sweet for you two to be traveling again. You better send me a postcard. I'll be very friendly if you don't send me a postcard, as a matter of fact. 
And, uh, you know, if you're in a strange country with strange women, remember to wear a raincoat. That's all I'm saying. Ah! Okay, thank you guys very much for coming. Enjoy the rest of the night, everybody. Here it is. Back to your host, Eric Scholl, everybody. Oh, one more time for Mike McCray. Yeah. Oh.